this black box. Well, it's actually not black, it's, I think it's indigo, isn't it? I mean, I know I may have gotten the colour wrong, but this seems excessive. Anyway, moving on. Thank you! Uh, we're talking about a Pininfarina, and Pininfarina is a brand I've not reviewed a whole lot of pens of. This particular pen was is the um, uh, Senyo. I'm just double checking because I keep wanting to say Senya, and I don't know why. The Senyo PF2, and it was sent to me very kindly by Mr. Balas of uh, Balas Exclusive Gifts in Greece. Uh, he reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to review it, and I, I, I said yes. Uh, because I think it will be very interesting, and it is indeed a very interesting pen I have found. So, without further ado, let's get into it. I will cover the parts of the pen, I will do a writing sample, I will tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Let's get started. Okay, so here we go with the Pinin Farina Senyo PF2. This is uh, a pen, painted aluminum. It's the uh, second chapter, so Pinin Farina explains, of the design writing project. Uh, it's quite an interesting pen because it's not entirely round, it has a flat facet and therefore it requires multi-axis CNC lathes. Uh, and I will say the design is very interesting. It has actually won a red, sorry, I want to say red, I'm so sorry, red dot design award, which is a big deal. So. I do think the design of this pen is actually really quite nice. So let's first look at the box. It has this cardboard outer sleeve. And then in there is this really pretty neatly designed metal box, uh, which has this flat side on it. And that flat facet, you will see, comes back later. So here we have Pinin Farina. It says PF2. Uh, you can take this off and then uh, this comes out. Does it? No, this does not come out. I'm mistaken. I'm so sorry. The pen does come out, though. The pen is here. I've only opened this once, you see. I mean, then I took the pen out, inked it, and I've been using that for a while. So I do, do you see, I'm very smooth with this box. Let's put that away and let's just continue. So here we have the actual pen. Now, it has a flat facet there. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to put it on there so it won't roll. And I'll put it right next to a... Pilot Metropolitan for a size comparison. I'm going to zoom in a bit here, readjust the pens of course, uh, so you can see it a bit better. Let's talk about the parts of this pen. So clearly a, a sort of a designer pen I, I would say. Nib range from extra fine to broad, number six, steel. Uh, this particular one is medium nib uh, and I think there's quite a lot going for the pen. So you have an aluminum body or aluminium in some countries, including mine. Uh, let's let's have a look at the, the, the parts of the pen. So we start off at the cap, and as you can see, both the cap and barrel ends are cut at this in this slanted uh, fashion, which I think looks quite nice. And I have to admit, this pen has grown on me quite a lot since I started to use it. I've been using this for a number of weeks now. Uh, I've taken it to work and I've, I've really used it and it's grown on me. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain why. So we have here the Pinin Farina logo. It's actually a clip and as you can see that clip, it is not exactly flush with the rest of the cap but is pretty damn close and it is spring loaded. And as you can see this clip is very flat and it lies again almost flush in this little groove on the cap, which I think is a very nice design element. Then we have this flat facet here, um, a very, I think, beautiful, uh, almost organic shape, right, with thin on one end, gets wider in the middle, and thin on the other end again, just like a brontosaurus. Uh, then here at the end uh, we have this, well, it's an end, I mean, it's an it's end, end cap. Uh, there's no real finial, that's just the mechanism to operate the clip, which actually took me a little bit of time to figure out. I kept trying to hook my nail under this, not necessary, it's spring-loaded. And then the cap pulls off. Now, one thing that I would like to point out right now before I forget, as you may see, I've put this flat facet right on top, and then the nib is at a slight angle, it's slightly offset. However, um, this may sound weird, let me unscrew the barrel, but by um, rotating the converter, 
you can actually rotate the nib, nib a bit. And that means that if you are so inclined with a bit of patience, you can make the nib align perfectly with that flat facet if it bothers you when you write with it that they don't line up perfectly. I will admit I would get a little bothered if they were, were not perfectly aligned. I just haven't had the time to sit down and play with that for a long time. Which is what she said. Now, moving on, here we have the number six nib. Um, there will be a uh, close-up in the pictures uh, accompanying the pen on the website, but it has the uh, Pinin Farina uh, F uh, and a little crown. It's quite a nice design, no breather hole. It, it, again, it, it also looks quite... I'm just going to use the term designer. A very sleek design, I think. Then we have the bottom. is quite interesting because you have this lip here that the cap grabs onto it is a magnetic closure which is quite neat. Um, the section is ever so slightly textured. It's not a massive texture but there is a bit of texture to it so it is not slippery I have found. And I know what question you have. Is this going to get in the way of your writing? I have not found that. Um, I usually curl up my middle finger a little bit more and then it might, but if you leave it a little straight, the nib is number six, there's enough space from that to the paper. I don't find this uh, to bother me as I write, however it is quite sharp. So this might be a pen you would try out before you buy it, which might not always be easy. But I'm just saying, I found it to be quite comfortable. Uh, it is fed, as you can see, by a cartridge converter which actually uh, screws in. And now, of course, I'm undoing everything. So now, I don't know if I'm slowly unscrewing the nib, but in any case, now it doesn't come out. Don't worry, if I were to open this up, I would just gently grab the nib and feed, uh, and then the converter comes out. I've had absolutely no issue removing it, I think, because I was just playing with it. I may have messed this up a bit. Don't worry about it, because again, it hasn't been an issue so far. You see, now I've really messed it up, because now this part is actually on top. Uh, I don't want to take up all your time, so I'm just going to rotate that a bit and we'll see where this ends up and I'm just going to write with it. Okay, that's pretty close to where we started off. Um, final thing to say, what about posting? It's not really an option. Uh, it's, I, I, you, you can't do it one way. The other way around, you can sort of make it post. However, uh, with all this being metal, I haven't really found the need. I think it is quite large enough and as you can see you can get a bit of scuffing because you're putting metal on metal now fortunately that wipes off quite easily it's the same thing uh, at the bottom of the section I found that a bit but again it, it wipes off really quite easily the most attractive aspect of the pen I have found is what I'm about to show you it's the writing and it's just started to ring if you hear weird noises this is a medium nib the Senyo PF2 medium steel nib and this is a Schaefer Scrip Red. What I have found really, really wonderful about this pen, sorry that's dreadful writing, um, is the writing. It's very pleasant. This nib, in my mind, really has the perfect amount of feedback. Not too smooth, not too feedbacky. Really quite pleasant. Um, feed keeps up well. I have not had any issues with the pen running dry. I have also not had any issues with the pen drying out as it is capped. As you can see, it's quite a wet writer, especially for a medium nib. Um, nib shape is definitely round. As to springiness, as always, very careful. You can squeeze out a little bit, but this is not a flex nib. It's not advertised as such. It's none of these things. Uh, finally, the reverse writing. Definitely a scratchier experience, but you can get away with a couple words and you definitely turn this good medium into a fine, I would say, if not extra fine. Very interesting pen. Let's talk about what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Okay, so what do I like and what do I not like about the Pinin Farina? I keep wanting to say Pirin Farina, by the way. Pinin Farina. 
uh, Senyo PF2. To be honest, there's a lot I like about it, and I, I really think this pen has a lot going for it, and again, it has grown on me quite substantially uh, since I started to use it, because initially I thought, mm, yeah, I don't know if this design is really for me. I tend to lean a little bit towards more classic pen designs, and this is really quite a modern design. Having said that, I think there are a couple of things that are outstanding on this pen. Because, I mean, design, yeah, some people like modern design, some people don't. You, you, this is a personal thing, right? First of all, the writing experience is superb. It's a steel nib, but I think this is one of those pens that just proves you really don't need to have a gold nib to have a, a wonderful writing experience with a fountain pen. It's smooth, it's consistent, it hasn't skipped a single time, it hasn't run dry, the capping mechanism works well, uh, red inks I have found can dry up a little bit um, when they're in a pen, it can give some hard starts. No issues with this pen. So I really think uh, from that perspective, this has really been been quite impressive. Uh, I find the pen very comfortable. Yes, there is that thing at the bottom, but if you are able to move your fingers a little bit, it's not a big deal. The section is not skinny, but it is by no means too wide for me to use. I think this works for a lot of people. Uh, it's not incredibly girthy, nor is it too skinny. It just works in my mind. And the looks, you know, they have, they have grown on me. Plus the attention for detail. The magnetic cap, so that it always lines up, works great. The clip, spring-loaded, very easy to operate, works very well in putting, a pen, putting the pen uh, in a pocket. I know you can't really see this, but I'm just putting it in my shirt. Uh, in, in a pocket, in a pen case, in a pouch, whatever. It, it works very, very well. So all these these factors I think are very positive. Things I don't like about it so much. Um, I wondered if the placement of the flat facet and the nib really work this way. I wondered at some point would it not be nicer if you were to write with the flat facet resting on your hand. And oddly enough I found that it doesn't. I've experimented a bit again. You can rotate that nib I find it perfect as it is, with the flat facet at the same angle uh, as the nib. The one thing I will say, and this is a really strange thing, I don't know if I'm the only one who, who would get bothered by this, but please let me know below because it's always nice to get affirmation, even if it's just from one person that I'm not insane. Bear in mind that the flat facet works great for putting the pen on your desk, but if I put the pen on my desk like this, then I know that the nib is facing down. Is that strange? I would, I would like to think that I put it down and then the nib is facing to the ceiling. Again, I don't know if I'm really losing it. I mean, it is COVID, we've been inside for a while. Anyway, I was just thinking, I found that interesting. Um, that's it though. I really don't have anything else beyond it is aluminum, and I can tell, uh, I don't know how well you can tell, I'll try to put a picture up with a loop if I remember. There are minor, I, again, I, I don't know where you can see this, but where the, where the pen, oh, oh, where the pen caps, right above my fingernail here, uh, you can see minor scuff marks. It's metal on metal. And that's, I think, another reason that you, you, you might not really want to post this pen. I think it's almost impossible to scuff. Um, sorry, impossible not to scuff. And also there's this noise. Which doesn't bother me, but some people get bothered by such noises. So I'm just saying, beyond that, I think it's a really nice pen that just rolled off my... No, it doesn't roll off the desk, just rolled off a book. Um, but. I think it's great. It writes really nicely and I have found it surprisingly comfortable to use. When I saw it with the facet I wasn't convinced. It's been a lovely writer. That's really all I can say about it. So a very kind thank you to Mr. Balas for sending me this. I really appreciate it. I hope this review was useful and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye.